Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Jeff Meyer, and I am here with my uh, better looking than Vanna White, Vanna White, Clifford Snow. <laughs> and uh, we're here to talk about uh, really a story of a bunch of data and a willing community and a, a map that could use that data. So uh, we're going to focus on how we came about bringing in a lot of uh, City of Seattle's open data uh, related to addresses and building outlines in ways that we think show that some of the common perceptions about imports in the OSM community may be off base. They may have good reasons in history, but those don't have to be uh, prevalent or ruling. This is a little bit of where, uh, where I'll take you today. Oh, wait, we got some people coming in. Excellent. And that's our beautiful city. And our goal, part of it, is we had a little bit of map envy, uh, which I registered the DNS for that just now. Um, Surrey, that's better. Huh? Yes. Well, we have these nice cities in Germany that just are amazing. Like, I know we're doing the Cardo restyling, and whether it's a good map or a bad map, but you just look at that and you go, oh, that is awesome. Yeah. And then you look, it's kind of like hefty, 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 wimpy, wimpy, wimpy. There's a lot of blocks with no information in them. If you look at it, you go, That's a, uh, that appears to be a naked map. Uh, there's a lot of inconsistency. We have buildings in certain areas and nothing in other areas other than the beautiful streets for which our map is named. But we want to make it more useful as well. You know, there's a, there's a reason we put things on maps. Um, hold, and then the we, hold the mic closer. You got it. Sorry. I'm loud, so I'm trying to counteract that. So we went to, but we were like lemmings. We were milling about in Seattle, and we were like, we want to make a better map. We want to make a better map. I don't know. How should we make a better map? We should make a better map. And then we went to this conference last year, and this guy, uh, who is also part of the Seattle OSM community at the time, until he moved without telling anyone, uh, <laughs> Go get some addresses. And I think he actually hit on some of the reasons that, that Paul was talking about, um, about imports. You know, our address is important in the map. Are they important in the geocoder? We kind of felt like it'd be cool to have them in the map. And so we now had a mission. We had a bunch of people and a mission. And uh, so we, we had our early import plan looked kind of like this before we got into it. We were like, get some data, import it, and amazing things are going to happen. How many people, first of all, how many people here have done an import? Show of hands. How many people are thinking about doing an import? All right, okay. Well, this will just tell you some of the things we learned. I'm not, I can't promise you good times. I cannot promise you profits. Um, so we went through the, uh, you know, we found that there was some stuff on the wiki that said kind of like, hey, here's a bunch of steps. And I want to I point out one thing. The work that Paul Norman and Sarah's are doing with imports is amazing. There's a lot of dedication and devotion to time. There's a lot of history behind why they're doing the things that they're doing. And um, I'm just concerned that, you know, we're growing, OSM is growing faster than the import process is getting fixed up. This is the outline of the web page. And I, I made a template for any city to use. You can put it together. If you go to the wiki, you should register. You know, you should talk to the U.S. import group. I assume you're here from the U.S., although there are a lot of, of people from elsewhere, but use your local authorities. There's a nice template to follow. If you fill it all in, I can almost guarantee you, you will have addressed all of the issues related to the import. So they're a pain, but they're there. And if you follow them, when Paul or Sarah asks you a question, you'll have an answer. And I'm open to questions too along the way. But this is the flow that we had. And in there, there's a lot of email getting answered, which meant, that, and if you're a coder and you have exception handling, and something's throwing a lot of exceptions, your exceptions to the rule are always getting hit, what's that telling you? There's possibly something wrong with your process, right, to begin with. Save that for later. And uh, some, of the, you know, some of the historical import critiques that we faced, I think, were based on some bad assumptions that got permeated throughout the community. One is that imports discourage community. And a lot of that comes from a paper that a really important guy to the history of OSM uh, Matt Amos put together, and you can go to that link and find it, and there's a chart and his graph. Um, you know, all I would say is it's based on simulation, not real op world observations, and the, the model works exactly as it was built. So I think there were some built-in assumptions there. Um, there's concerns that imports can destroy data. I heard somebody asking earlier, should I remove stuff or not? Well, guess what? If you go in and you move a nude, node, you've just destroyed some data. 
you've improved the map, but you've destroyed it. Many things are going to destroy data. We're going to have to break some eggs to get to a better end state of map. The other thing is, a lot of the stuff that, that gets deleted, the original author doesn't care. Their goal, the reason they put it in there in the first place, was to make a better map. I think most people have implicit assumptions that if you can improve it, improve it. And then there's another question of whether imports degrade the quality of the map. And I think that uh, we ought to take a look at, <laughs> I'm looking at this because the quality of my second bullet there under three is missing a point, <laughs> um, which is uh, consistency. Uh, it's a map quality, accuracy, completeness, and consistency. So I fail completeness. Um, <laughs> but I think that we very much focus too highly on accuracy at the expense of other measures of map quality. And it's just something to think about. It's something that we're addressing and a question for, you know, pondering over beer at Raven. And, uh, you know, the good news is there are a lot of tools. If you want to take on a community and you want to build an import process, there are um, some great tools, and I, we learned about these because we went out on the email list and the threads at Imports At, and we learned that there's a great tool by a guy named Barnacle Barnes down in New Zealand for carving stuff up, and then there's obviously the amazing HOT. We should all genuflect towards HOT whenever someone mentions it, and, uh, and it's Tasking Manager, but everything's kind of grid-like, and it doesn't work around neighborhoods, and we're focusing on, the reason I ask the question about community is that we're very focused on our local community. How does our Seattle community use the map, and how does OSM respond to our use of the map and our interaction? And so our overall plan was recruit volunteers. Oh, I just showed you the really nice tools. Those are the tools we use. We divided up every neighborhood, put it on the wiki, and said sign up, right? Cliff got a bunch of data from the city. He cleaned it out. He used some stuff and tips from Paul, and we put it up on Dropbox. So we had some files up on Dropbox, broken down by neighborhood. We had a list. You should sign up for the neighborhood you're in. And those are our neighborhoods in Seattle. We can talk about whether neighborhood maps from the city are going to be correct or how people talk about it. Didn't matter. It was just a tool for us to kind of divide things up that made more sense than grids. And we wanted to do it in a very artisanal process, the mapping. I'll go through that in a second. And then follow up with cleansing, standardization, and walkarounds. And so when we went out to joined the team, you know, it was interesting. I don't know if you saw Mikkel's talk about community. Well, we went to this tool called History to see who was there. We sent out individual emails to people in our community and said, hey, why don't you come sign up and join up with the import? We noticed that you've made some edits here. Might be something fun to do. Also curious, you made some edits. Why, did you, why didn't you come back? What can we do? There's a great group in the local area. There's already a mapping community, an open source mapping community called Kugos which has the most backward acronym ever, so I won't even explain it, but it's Cascadia Users of Geospatial Open Source Software and, and Masters of Marketing. And then there is the OpenStreetMap group that's local in Seattle that um, up until recently Steve Coase headed. So we, had, you know, we had some people we could go ta task out. We built a process that's very artisanal. Essentially, entire neighborhoods had combined building outlines and addresses, so we assigned and merged the ad address tags based on geometries of the buildings, which doesn't solve all your problems. You'll run into cases where there are multiple addresses on a single building, differing addresses that, that aren't used, but they're still there. We went through all that. We essentially said, copy and paste it from that layer into the master layer that you're working with, compare visually on a block-by-block -block basis, add stuff that's there, more importantly, take out stuff that's no longer there. We find out very closely in detail what that address information, the accuracy and quality of that information we got from the city might be. And then load it up. And then, even better, go out in the field using a tool like GoMap, which is this really amazing iOS native app that one of our local Seattle people, Bryce Cogswell, put together uh, that's amazing. We didn't have ID at that time. Um, and ID is not native, right, Bryce? And so. That was our process. And we ran some training courses, got the word out, told people, hey, we want to make the local map better. Do you want to make the local map better? Yes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So uh, since December, we've had you know, nine events. That's a lot. Some of them are very specific to JOSM training and the import. Some are, are more like, hey, let's just go to a bar out in the countryside and uh, map the area around that or a public library and, and kind of get around and check things out, flush out the local area with feet on the street. Um, but part of that, and frequent topic of discussion, was the import. And the import's also a great excuse for opening doors to other people. Obviously, 
we talked about Kugos, and they've let us kind of invade their meetings every now and then, which is nice of them. Because um, to them, you know, they're serious hardcore GIS people. So they live in maps, but a lot of times they're living in the data in the maps as opposed to kind of the local community. And we even went to this thing recently called the National Day of Civic Hacking, which is kind of random hacks of kindness in the Seattle area. It was amazing. And this is a note I got from one of the guys who was there. It was essentially saying, hey, I'd love to do it, just didn't have a thing to go with. And, you know, one of the reasons I put the picture of the puzzle players, of the soccer players from Seattle up there, is because this goes to the seeding question, you know, that I think the best slide in Serge's presentation was it's a war of extremes, right? And one of those extremes is some people feel like they need data. Um, is it a valid argument? Well, it was for this guy. May not be true all, of course, across the board. And here's a sample. Here's a guy. This, this slide here highlights very well the difference between what the data looked like before the import and what it looked like after the import. Now, you could just do a massive cut and paste and say, I'm done. I can tell you it'll trigger a flag on Paul's radar. He'll be like, what just happened here? Um, but this is this guy's neighborhood, Duncan. Goes by Chronomax. Amazing guy. Super cool coder, but hadn't really been engaged before this process. Now, let's see what happens if we zoom in a little bit. I don't know if you guys can read this, but he walked around the neighborhood. And then, in addition to the addresses, a lot of the uh, buildings in this area are old brick apartment buildings. They have names, like histories, like Mulholland Department, or crazy stuff up here, like Christina, Elizabeth, um, you know, Amparo, Broadway Crest. He's starting to build in some local richness to that map that was triggered by the fact that there was a building there to draw and add to in the first place, give him an incentive to walk around. Cliff's going to point out that apparently this is my neighborhood that I've been assigned to. <laughs> Thanks, Cliff. You're welcome. Yeah, that's why, he's, that's why he's here. So this is some of the progress we've been making, kind of working our way, apparently, falling down like a waterfall from the north. Um, you know, we've had our events. We've had, some, you know, we've had a, a large number of participants. And I don't know if this would, we would have had this many people editing OSM to begin with, but maybe. I just haven't seen it in the history. Um, you know, there were more of those big block uh, bot edits that are coming through, changing things in the local area. So we have even more mappers who have been trained through this process. And we even got a holler. Can I get a what, what? No. He only goes so far. He only goes so far. But we did hit Reddit. You know, somebody was out there and talking about mapping and artisanal mapping and adding stuff. And you can kind of see the big orange one. Somebody else heard about it, thought it was cool. I don't know what that's good for, but it made us feel kind of special. Um, next steps, we need to finish it. We need to get everything in there. Ideally, then we're going to have somebody from a different neighborhood go through, go through the same process. You pick up somebody else's neighborhood, go through, double check their work, um, add some information. And the more information we're getting from the city, the more interested the city is in using OSM. It's kind of a catch-22, but somebody has to start the ball rolling. Um, and at the Civic Day of Hacking, people, the parks guys wanted to do micro-mapping. You know, I'm very interested in multimodal routing. You know, there are people who want to know, how can I do micro-mapping of wheelchair you know, and accessibility types of things? What better tool than OSM? So now I'm going to get into the muck, OK? Here are some of the lessons I've learned. And there are a bunch of things that we can go into and have entire conversations on on the email thread. I think the biggest issue with imports right now is a matter of perspective on two fronts. And the question is, does OSM, as an organization, as we are here today, exist to serve itself or to serve the local community? Because I feel a lot of times like we are answering to the central community. And I see things come in in bots that change coastline tags on the shore of Lake Washington. And I was like, why wasn't I given a chance? I live on the shore of Lake Washington, almost, across the street. I rent. Um, <laughs> but, Close enough. But why wasn't I given a chance to learn about why that, that tag's being changed and make the met edits myself? Why wasn't the local group tasked out to do that stuff? And it's also a question of data. And there's a question, oh, is this right? Is it wrong? Is it whatever? But this is data that's building in addresses. And I think if we fix our rendering style sheet, the visual impact of buildings being there or not is going to go away. But in the meantime, it's there. And a lot of people look at that and they go, hey, I want my city's map, my OSM to have those buildings. How can I get it in there quickly? And I think the processes that we've gone through, and I think it's very curated and artisanal, 
I have to tell you, I'm not sure it's the right time and energy we should be spending. I would almost prefer to do an entire dump and let people correct problems on the way, rather than going through there in the first place, assuming that everything's wrong. Again, it's a matter of perspective. If the data is good enough for the city of, da of Seattle, the local people, and we want the city of Seattle to be using OSM to make it a longer term, more sustaining community, what assumptions should we make, right or wrong? Um, I think that all the assumptions, regardless of the muck that I'm throwing up there now on the wall, all the issues are, are addressable. I think we've done a reasonable first stab at addressing those things. We're building community, we're doing it by hand, we're doing it in a scale way, and hopefully a way that's going to draw more users. But I will say this, well, Disraeli said something too. Does anybody know what Disraeli said about quality and quantity? He said, quantity has a quality all of its own. And I think there's some merit to that. A big pile of data for our city of Seattle is good. And it, it attracts people. And then once it's in there, it can encourage field mapping. So that's kind of what we have here today. That's what we came to talk about. Um, again, I'd like to say there's a lot of people out there who do work day in, day out on imports. Paul and Serge, we wouldn't have gotten this done without them. But I think as a community, we need to get together and say, hey, what is the community, the OSM community this time, approach to local community data imports? How should we embrace them? Should we treat them any differently than we do now? If not, no big deal. That's all I have. Cliff, did you have anything you want to add? Questions? Questions? Yes, tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, I, I want to get this. So the question is, no, 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 no. The question is, where do we get the neighborhood boundaries? We got them from the city. Are they different from what people, you know, so the question is, where do you get the neighborhood boundaries from? Are they useful or are they not? For our purposes, all we want to do is divide up work. Oh, I know they're useful. So we got them from the city of Seattle. So, so the question is, is was there sub-neighborhoods? Absolutely. Um, these, uh, if you go back to the slide, those are all sub-neighborhoods. There's a couple neighborhoods like where I live, Wallingford, it's just one huge, humongous thing. But there's a lot of small neighborhoods building. In fact, they're so small that some people that live in the neighborhood don't know they have another name. Um, but yes, so um, that's in there. In the back? Right there. You're in the back. <laughs> uh, what was your name again, sir? Uh, Richard. Richard, and you're from? Uh, Great North, North 49. Thank you. <laughs> All right, uh, there we go. Um, it strikes me you're talking about people building community and, and getting feedback, but I wonder if you have your thoughts on the sort of, sort of parallel rules built the data groups built, city institutions, building boundaries, such as that data sits there for the user. I wonder if your thoughts on how to get a feedback loop to say, Yeah, so, so I think what I heard was, is, is, is there a way we can uh, work with the city to kind of partner with them um, to, to, get the, to get their data to, to kind of reside in uh, OpenStreetMap? Um, yeah, so I, let me answer uh, two parts here. Um, first part, I know working with the uh, National Park Service, they have a problem um, getting data that is not public domain. So everything the National Park Service gives us is, is public domain. We put a license on there, and now they're restricted from using it. So there, there is an issue there, and some communities might have the same problem. But now in Seattle, um, I got hit up by the uh, Washington State Broadband Manager, and apparently we have um, computer centers throughout the, the state where people can come in and use computers if for some reason they don't have them. And, and they're figuring they need some place for this data to reside long term. They want to put it in OpenStreetMap. So we're meeting um, next week to figure out how to do that.
So I think there is a, a really good opportunity to partner. I believe I remember on the wiki, somebody in New York was working with the fire department, I think, to get some of the data. So the question is, have we ever done any A-B testing? And for people who aren't familiar with that, it's just try and do the same thing twice in different environments and see if you get different results. Is that fair to say? And uh, I don't think anyone's ever done that, and I don't know that it's possible except to say we had an A test, excuse me, we had a B test in Seattle, which was called before the import. And we have an A test, which is the after result of the import. So we have, you know. No, but I mean, it's effectively, you have two control. They're effectively controlled the same way, right? The map existed forever. It was there. People had the opportunity to do it. The data didn't get in. Was that, were you asking about quality or? It's, yes, okay, everybody, I understand. Strictly speaking, it is not an A-B test. That said. Yes. Yes. Uh, no one's ever done that. We need two small towns in Kansas. Are you volunteering? Are you from a small town in Kansas? <laughs> what, what's your name, sir? Okay. Nitten, who lives in the conference center. Okay. <laughs> So the question is, does it benefit, do you benefit from having a more mature community? And I would say yes. I don't think we have a large sample size here, right? So uh, I believe, and the question, the sub-question is, what do we mean about maturity? Um, and the answer, I think, to the sub-question is, I think we're talking about the maturity of the mapping, like the OSM mapping community in that town. Is that what you meant, Nitin? Okay. He, he was asking about, does it help to have a very mature OSM mapping community during this process? Seasoned and experienced. Yes. By the way, it was one of my favorite exchanges on email. Someone said, do you have any experienced OSMers who are participating in this import? And I was like, well, there's Steve Coast. I thought that was pretty good. Uh, that was pretty good. But I, I think the answer has to be always yes. It helps to have more people there. They know what to do. They know the tricks and the trades. I would say, though, with no offense to Steve, the OSM community prior to this import was stagnant. It was, it was doing some stuff, but I can tell you, just looking at the tools we have at our disposal, history, I only had to send out like 15 emails of people who had made edits in the Seattle area in the last, you know, 12 months. Does that help, Nitin? Yes, sir. Uh, I, I don't know the right answer to that. The question is, the question is, should you import where you have no mappers to support the data? That sounds risky to me. But yes, yeah, yes, yeah. That's so. Tom Hughes just said, "Hey, well, the way we did it is an import that builds community, but an automated import isn't really one that builds community." And and that's Grant. And Grant's saying it discourages it. And, and mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly, but I think the tiger. So the, the example is the tiger import, which created a bunch of data and potentially some inconsistencies in a lot of places. Which is why we're glad that people like Eric Fisher, who can go in and, and highlight those things. I think that if we were to do that in Seattle we would love to get that current data and make that our next task. We'll block it out by neighborhood and find out what's good, what's bad, sort it out. But I, to, to the question of, I think Nitin was asking, if there's no one there, that, that's, that's probably beyond the realm. 
That's, that's too much. Uh, yes? Um, yeah, the, the question is, how, how do we keep the data from getting stale? How do, how do we refresh it? Um, I, I know that the city of Seattle is planning a, a, another ortho um, flyby in 2014. Mm -hmm. I don't know when the data will be available, so probably 2015. But um, buildings, for the most part, like residential, um, don't change too much. and you. As I was doing the imports in my neighborhoods, and I'm sure you've probably found this, you can spot a house that doesn't match the outline pretty quick and, and make an adjustment. The good news is the address is probably the same. I think that the, the, re, the way you get people to continue on is to engage them in the community by, by holding mapping events, um, getting them to do things that they like to do. If it's meeting at pubs and talking over what they're mapping, you do that. If it's, if it's going out and doing um, mapping in neighborhoods, you do that. Um, in reality, you probably do both. I, I would add one thing to that if I could. I think you have to create problems. You have to be a little creative if you want to get people involved. And you have to. There's a saying, management by arson, right? You walk somewhere and you set up fire and you're like, someone better put that out. <laughs> and, and so I think that's a little bit what you have to do. You need to pick your next thing. You need to say, look, there's not enough 7 Eleven in there or Starbucks, good Lord, or whatever, and pick a challenge. The, the tiger data is messed up. Let's fix the tiger data in our area and give people responsibility. Remember, we were just wandering around in the desert until we heard get some addresses. And then we're like, aha, we have a mission. You know, and, and I, I will tell you this, it annoys me when Map Roulette sends me somewhere else, and it annoys me when I see Map Roulette pictures in my neighborhood from somebody who lives in wherever they live. Well, maybe you should run the story with each other and Map Roulette too doesn't do that. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> and what I have to say to you, Serge, is you are welcome for the straight line. Uh, Grant, you had a question, I believe. Oh, sorry. You own it, right? Yeah. 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 But but I think uh, yes, in general. But I think that if we had blanket imported, say, Grant was saying, hey, you need to create a you need to create a garden and tell people it's their garden a little bit. And I think that if we had gone through in Seattle and said, hey, your garden's messed up, we, we, could, have, we could have achieved the same results faster and had people doing other high value add. That's, yeah. Yeah. I hope so. Or I'll get an email. He'll get an email from me. Tomorrow, hold on one second. You, you had a question? Yes. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Who's over there? Oh, oh okay. yeah. You, sir, just out of my field of vision. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. So I was going to ask, you know, are you focused, like, within the community, say, around the, uh, I'm hearing about the last, like, viaduct out that was for demolition, I think. Mm -hmm. Are you all involved with, say, communities right around that area? So the question is, uh, so there's a big, first of all, in Seattle, there's a big uh, construction project going. We're tearing down a big bridge that we could not wait for an earthquake to come along and help us with. And we're going <laughs> to dig a tunnel under the ground and, and it's kind of clean up our um, waterway the same way that San Francisco did after its earthquakes Boston's or Boston's big dig and the question is what are we Don't doing <laughs> yeah yeah thank you for the curse no and the question is are we doing anything around that area and I would say we're not spending any special attention to that partially because nobody lives in that area nobody really lives downtown there are some people who do they all work down there 
But we, we're, you know, people are keeping busy in the areas that are of interest to them. So, uh, tomorrow, and then one more. I don't know how much time we have. We're right at time. So two more questions, and then we'll wrap it up. So the question is, is um, do we pay any special attention to um, transit corridors? And the answer is no. Um, they probably exist. We don't use them. We only look at yeah. their address and their building page. But, but one, of the, one of the new people that came to our meetup um, just last weekend, she was all excited because she wants to be able to do mapping for wheelchair access. And she wants to know curb heights and where the ramps are and everything. And so we may have a person that's going to take that challenge on. And we're going to, we're going to encourage her to, to go find the data and figure out how to get it in. So for tools, um, fix the conflation plug-in for JASM. It doesn't work. It breaks. Uh, we had to quit using it. Um, I, I don't know about the to-do to plug-in. Paul mentioned the to-do plug-in. I'm not too sure. Um, I've never used it, so I'm not a bad, good person to ask the question. Um, another area that that's, doesn't work too well on JASM is if you copy in a, a multi Polygon, the relationship doesn't get copied with it. The, the key to that is you have to be. Hold on, Paul, Paul's going to answer the question. Uh, so the key to the key to uh, dealing with uh, a multi polygon or any relation, merging it between layers, is you have to be careful to select the relation, not the ways that make it up. Which is which is admittedly not obvious. It's a middle click or something uh, to select. Okay. Overlapping objects. I would just say it, it, it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was, that's what Paul was saying. Is, is and then it, 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 yeah, it, it doesn't work in the, in the process we were trying to do. You're doing a style of mapping that keeps the support set short. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. Yes, and, and better support. Encourage greater use of OSM and greater integration of useful OSM open data into OSM. 
But there, yeah. but there are some great tools that work really well in JOSM for this process. It really w is a pretty simple process. I mean, one of the things we did is, is we broke them into four different um, OSM files to import. Uh, just because it was too hard to write the, 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 the SQL statement to put them all into one and, and to run them through a, a translator. So we just put the forum and then you go and jazz them and there's a nice little tool called merge and you just fix them all together. Takes, you know, 30 seconds. So, to do is so the answer to your question. So I think. Who's not the most technically savvy? Yeah. I'm an old glass blower, so what do I know? <laughs> so um, I think we're out of time for questions. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank, thank you. Very much. you.